I invite Professor R.C. Decker, Director, All India Institute of Medical Sciences, to please address the gathering. Good morning to you all, ladies and gentlemen. We are very grateful to the Honorable Chief Minister of Delhi, Madam Sheila Dixit, who has graced this occasion. It is indeed an honor for All India Institute as well as the members of the Dietetic Association. I also thank the President of the Association for choosing AIMS to host this conference and I also congratulate our dietetic departments for successfully holding this conference to attract so many delegates to this conference. I'm very happy to see, and I'm told that there are several participants, both within the country and abroad, and young dietitians, and also nutritionists, scientists, doctors, students, and others. Ladies and gentlemen, Madam has very ap aptly emphasized about the balanced diet. I'll not cover those things, but I'll cover some few points as a doctor's point of view. Nutrition is the key point for our good health. Right from the day a child is born, he or she requires nutrition. So whether it is a mother or grandmother or a father who looks after the baby for his or her good health, they play the role of a dietitian. Therefore, the breastfeeding, I'll underline, the breastfeeding is also part of the nutrition and role of a dietitian, in that case the mother play the role of a dietitian and give proper nutrition to a baby, not only to protect from illnesses and other virus and bacteria that are exposed soon after the birth of a baby. Their immune mother's milk is the best food for such a baby. And during the childhood also in our country, as you know, this infant mortality rate is very high. Average is still 50 per 10,000 alive birth. We need to improve in that area. And it is you, as a dietitian, as a nutritionist, or also as a mother, can play a big role in containing and controlling such maladies afflicted to infant within the five years of their life. Many of them do die because of prematurity, malnutrition, and lack of sufficient food available due to poverty. Friends, ladies and gentlemen, right from the baby till the geriatrics, as they said, as Madam has said, our longevity when we were independent were 32 point some years. Today it is 68.6 years. So we have been successful in controlling infectious diseases through various voluntary, private, and the government support through our healthcare system. And that has been shown in the form of increased longevity. As you know, when longevity increases, there are several other health issues comes because dietetics and nutrition, they go together, not only for promotion of health, not only intellectual development for a child during his formative period, in the early period, up to five years, then onwards, during the schooling. Therefore, it is a very ongoing activities to look after the health of a person through nutrition, and in which it is you can play a tremendous role. Firstly, I must say also, it is All India Institute who made significant uh, contribution in the field of 
Integrated Child Development Program through our gastroenterology and nutrition department. It is this department under the leadership of then professor and head professor B. N. Tendon, a nutrition department was created along with gastroenterology. Through that, it is now the government of India and various states government have adopted that program as a midday meal. As you know, friends, ladies and gentlemen, central government has only recently enacted an act, right to education. You know, 70% of the population live in the rural area and their access to education is still limited, although efforts have been made by all state government and the central government. Efforts are being enhanced to see that the children go to school and all children from village as well as slum in rural, urban areas as well, they go to schools and this midday meal it has two significant as aspects in it. One, they are provided a, at least one meal a day from the school. Two, that also attracts such people who cannot afford even a meal to come to the school. So it has a two important function in it. Secondly, I must tell you, it is not only Madam has outlined the health hazards of imbalanced diet. I'll not go to that, but I'll focus again. We need good food, good nutrition, not only to promote physical health, but also promote mental well-being. Not only during the health situation, but also in the disease condition. Although we have controlled and contained a lot of infectious diseases, it is still visible. I have just inaugurated and attended another conference today, Madam, on tuberculosis care and prevention. In our country, it's such a large country with 1.2 billion population, you can imagine what is the dimension, magnitude of a one disease called tuberculosis. Although tuberculosis patient, pulmonary tuberculosis is easy to diagnose. Extra pulmonary tuberculosis being there in the bone or in a node or the pelvic region in females do cause a lot of maladies in them, including infertility. Therefore, we need to do a lot of assessment and bring down that disease. In doing so, it is you again, as a nutritionist and dietitian, can play a significant role. Those who are on anti-tubercular drugs also needs good food, good nutrition. Otherwise, mere giving dots or mere giving medicine for any disease for that reason, but more so in case of tuberculosis, also for cancers, when patients are uh, getting treatment, chemotherapy or radiotherapy, which reduce the immunity of a person, again needs good food, proper diet, diet and therefore you, it is you who can guide the doctors and the hospital staff and the people at large. We need to maintain some protocol, maintain some, make some guidelines for proper food items, rich in protein, rich in carbohydrates, and other vitamins and minerals. So it is you, young girls and boys, who are engaged in these branches of healthcare from profession and branches of science, you need to re do research and innovate, which is best for our country. Particularly children who are studying in school. Again, Madam has referred a lot of junk food because with the information technology and communication science, well spread in our country, we are very powerful in that, there is no doubt, but that has also malady and food damage to our culture in some ways. So we have to maintain balance in those areas also, so that people do not take wrong food, junk food, lead to obesity and diabetes. WHO has identified four non-communicable diseases. Besides tuberculosis, is a communicable disease, infectious disease, we have control to a great extent. We have also control in children, diarrheal diseases. Institute also was the leaders in producing 
the ORS formula modified by us. And that has also controlled significant ailment in children. Again, I am going to childhood diseases again. The diarrheal disease is very common. We need to work out how best you can contain. And one of the things that I'll request the madams and bring to her notice about the water, that we drinking water, unless and until we also provide proper drinking water, no question of giving balanced diet or good food or a heavy doses of antibiotic, heavy doses of cancer, drugs and diabetes control, etc. will remain the same. Here is a big public health problem, therefore, attached to nutrition and diets. We need to examine how we can tackle them in our country because ours is a very diverse country with diverse cultural background and habits and beliefs. So we need to work out for our own success. I am going back to again disease. WHO has identified four important non-communicable diseases. One is cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, and chronic pulmonary diseases. These are increasing again because of our increased longevity. But along with longevity, therefore, there are attendant problems. The All India Institute, they have just recently established a department of geriatrics, madam, to tackle the old age related problem. Government of India has sanctioned money and ident identified two places, one in Chennai, one in Delhi, to have two national institute for aging. So like that, you have seen there are number of problems uh, related to children, as the aged, and women. I will now cover one minute, if you permit me, madam, if you are, have time, I will say about, because this is the occasion, there are a large number of females. I have to say that unless we have women's empowerment in the villages, which is already in the process, government has taken due action in terms of promoting Panchayati Raj and developing microfinancing empowerment to the female women in the villages, which is excellent and very commendable job by the central government and the Delhi government. In that context, we have to empower the women in the family as well, so that the women get proper due support from the male folks, and therefore the money is available for the kids to be governed by the female person rather than a male person in the family. If that is done, we could probably eliminate a lot of ills uh, that is seen in the families for the betterment of the children and so on and so forth. When you talk of diabetes, again, it is you when they are in the hospital or in the public management in the community, the dietitians plays a great role because a lot of disease, diabetic patient, diabetics are increasing every day, huge number out of 10 person, if you see a survey, six will have diabetes. That is the kind of dimension of the disease. So it is you, who, if it is diagnosed at the early stage, it is you who can probably contain the disease, not to go beyond some level where the medication or the insulin is given. Similarly, when the cancer treatment, to make a cancer treatment, particularly as a surgeon I know, we may do the surgery, but post-operatively, dietetics and dietitian nutrition plays a significant role to recover from the disease condition. So with these few words, I welcome once again to this hall, to the institute. I hope your deliberation will be very fruitful. I hope you will go back to your respective place with some new knowledge and skill available to you through your interaction. And I'm sure you will have also some time to visit some departments of the All India Institute to carry some memory that you came here. Thank you, Madam, once again, that you have spared some time to grace this occasion, spend with us and your valuable opinion and the guidance. We accept very humbly and try to carry out some work in the aims. Thank you so much.